total. What's up? It's your boy Rick Rock, aka the Northern Cali King of Slaps, aka Senior L Blaps Bastard Lee, aka Rick Rock Beast, and you're chilling with Thizzler. Subscribe below. It's always been in me, not on me, you know? It's like, when I look back at it, I was playing Folgers cans back in the day. They, didn't, they used to have the metal cans and I would cut the bottoms out and the top off, obviously, but put the plastic top back on and play them as drums, big, small. I always loved it, I always was in the music and it just transitioned. That's an interesting question because most, most people that do this shit might not know when they transitioned to professional. You just like doing it and then and it's the, there's a series of events that happen and then you're professional now and you've been professional now. And you're like, damn, what did I? It's hard to w figure out. I've always been doing music. Always, my uncle gave me a drum set after he seen me playing the Folgers cans all the time. I got into that. Then I got into the band in the junior high, in high school. I, was, I just was a mess up, fucked up, I fuck up in high school and shit. But, but, and then I got in a rap group in high school. I was a beatboxer and shit. I think I was 14, they was like 18 or whatever. They was seniors. And, um, and shit, then I went to Alabama. I was trying to do it out there. When I went back to Alabama, I was trying to do rap out there. It was hard, because it was a lot of Southern rap, booty shake music at the time. And uh, shit, then after that, I said, fuck it, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna go to California. That's when, that's when I said, uh, dude came, Scott came and he just was like, come out. And I came out and that's when it kind of transitioned to like reality, you know, but I always was doing it. I was making songs, I was going to Atlanta making demos and trying to shop my albums everywhere, but they wasn't fucking with me and shit. So then I just said, I had an opportunity to come to Cali and I took it and it just, you know, it, it turned into something, but you had to per persist. You know, I had to persist and believe it. I had to lose my baby mama, all kinds of shit. Like, I ain't coming back right now. You know what I'm saying? I, I just can't. It's like, it's real. It's like reality here. You know, it's not just on TV. They're like really doing it. I, I just can't, I can't go back to Montgomery, man, and just, and talk about it. I had to stay, so I ended up staying. Uh, the dude that brought me out, Scott Gordon, ended up kicking me out or whatever. And I, like I said, uh, Mike Mosey happened to be around at the right time. Stayed with him. My nigga got out the pen, York. And when he got out the pen, he stayed with his baby mama, and I went to stay with them. And it just was cracking. It was cracking from then. It just, I just stayed on my grind, stayed on my grind, stayed on my grind. A person would come here, a person would come there. Then, um, then I, <clears throat> when, when I, once I did the Tupac shit, that's when I got my publishing deal. So that's when EMI was like, oh, you got some Tupac songs. I mean, you got some publishing money coming. Let me give you a deal. They gave me a little deal. I outworked that deal. They gave me another deal. I outworked that deal. Then I got, you know, a cool, a real deal. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I'm in that. And so I don't know, man. I don't know how I got into it. I just was always in it. That's the thing. You got to always be doing it. And then... And when you look back, you at some point will have transition. You know what I'm saying? If you if you're dedicated and you're good, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta have some some talent, and uh, especially then, you know, then to bite was like the antichrist. Now it's it's the law to bite. Like it's you have I mean to to steal to take. You know it's. It's the law. It's like, yeah, if you're not doing that, like everybody do that. Back then, you, man, you ass out the game for biting people's shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know my ninja. It's like that, I guess. Like any other beat, man, it's just a regular beat until people like it, you know, and make it something. Like everybody made it a memory by by the participating in it, you know, but it was just a beat. I just won a mini. And I, I think I did it for turf. I mean not turf, but keek. Uh, I think I had a vocal sample in it, like hyphy, hyphy, like I, or maybe I was singing that, like I wanted to do it for for that for, for Keek. 
because I was doing blue jeans, t-shirt, Nikes, and a couple of things with Kika at the time, whatever. And then um, 40 came over and we was working on, on his album and he was laying on the floor as usual, Carlos Rossi. Um, and I was working on Federation shit, you know, but we didn't have a single. Now we had our deal at a Virgin, but we didn't have a single. And so um, we were trying to find it, but um, so 40 came over, uh, maybe at that time I had started making the record for Federation. Like, okay, this is gonna be the Federation's record, hyphy, whatever. I want you to get on it, um, you know. And we started doing it, and Goldie came up, Goldie Stress and Dooney, whatever, came up with a little hook. And then 40 said his part on it in my closet. And um, we just had the hook and the beat, and it's just going over and over that it started to sound like it was gonna turn into something, right? And uh, then, uh, I think Goldie laid his verse first. I don't. It just. It just. It was just one of those kind of magical nights, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't know it's. You don't know what the fuck is going on. It just kind of start piecing itself together and shit. And, uh, when I heard Forty Break, I was like, Oh, okay, this might turn into something. But I thought it'd be a local, just a local record and shit. But, um, but Virgin. They, they wanted it to be a single, so that's how it ended up turning into being our first single off that album and shit. But it was just another beat, man. We was doing, I think I did It's All Gravity that day. Or maybe maybe another song off that album. We just, just dealt with, I would just do beats, bro. I just look, in, I just look out my window, I'd be like this. 40 to tell you, I just look up and they just come. I do them, I, I slap them, I put it down, we're going to the next one. 40 ain't saying nothing. If nobody's saying, uh, uh, or making us face or doing nothing, I move on. Move on to the next week, move on to the next week. And I just be beat, stacking. I be, hey, what happened to that one beat? Nigga, go back. Like, I sh nigga, I thought you weren't fucking with it. Hold on, let me go back. You know what I'm saying? Are oh, you fucking with it? All right, well, shit, well, let me add something to it. I start adding a little something base to it or whatever. And, you know, that's just how I go, man. It ain't. There ain't no science, really no science to it. You just get in there and knock this shit out. I, I say um, it's hard to chase your record. Try to handle your business off the rip. I got in doing professional business. A lot of people do a lot of independent. I did a lot of independent shit too. But uh, <clears throat> independently, it's harder to catch, it's harder to you know, it's harder to chase your money, you know what I'm saying? If, and it's harder to chase your, your, your money in song if you didn't handle it at the top. I say that to say this. Get your business straight off the rip. Try to have a price or whatever you're trying to do. Try to, cont try to uh, have legal rights to your song. Mechanicals. Mechanicals are the, the who wrote the song. If you made the beat, you wrote the song. You wrote 50% of the song. Whoever wrote the lyrics wrote 50% of the song. That's 100% of a composition. Now, if you give somebody the song and you didn't sign something or you signed something like, I think they were doing like leasing beats or you gave the dude the beat for $100 or you sold it for $100, just, you just straight gave it to him. It's a rap. It's done. And then they go 19 times platinum off your shit and make... 75 uh, billion dollars to the company and they pocket 600 million and you got a hundred dollars then you didn't handle your shit right you needed your hundred dollars it, it you know you got your money and it's fair exchange no robbery to a certain extent because you just you just sat down and wiggled your fingers and you feel like hey it's worth a hundred and you give it but then they turn that shit into something you know it's a little razzle dazzle going on around the world and you want to chase your money now. Now you're trying to, hey, I produced this song, but if you didn't handle your business at first, it's harder. I, you know, you get old in this shit, and you're human. Humans get old. They're young, and then they get old, you know. And if you want money to come knock on your door 15 years later for something you did, and, you know, and it's like a like a brand new bag of money right when you need it and shit. Like a, the dance network wants to play this song or these people want to play this song or these guys want this for this commercial or shit comes to, you know, pay you again later. 
and can't find you if you didn't handle your business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, or they'll just handle your business. When I say that, I mean you're publishing and it's harder for independent people because it just is. But they have their other avenues with their streaming and making sure they're, uh, they are a writer on the song and, and, and um, officially licensed on the song. So stop giving away shit, man. Stop giving away your shit. Sometimes you, sometimes you do have to take the opportunity. Don't get me wrong. I took opportunities too. I told 40, I don't even want to get paid on these two songs. Just put my name on it. You know what I'm saying? And, but I want all, I want my name on it and I want all the royalties. I want the mechanicals and shit intact, my writers and all that. I just, I don't want no money up front if you take these two beats. You know, record haters and the circumstances. The first two songs I did for 40. So I understand sometimes you gotta, you know, be heard. But ultimately, um, try to be in control of your baby. It's your baby. You know what I'm saying? Put your baby out on the, you know, in, in the, on the highway, cars going fast, you know, protect it protect yourself, that is your writers, your mechanicals, um, and ultimately, <clears throat> you know, your royalties from the record selling. But if you don't handle that, as a producer, you lost. There's nothing, there's nothing, you're not getting show money, you know, for them doing the show. So you need your performance rights, which is your ASCAP, BMI, whenever they play on TV or whatever, you should be getting paid. Uh, you know, and your mechanicals, whatever you wrote, produced, you should be getting paid. They should just handle that. Try to look into handling those things. That's your, that's your bread. And promote yourself. Promote yourself. Now, you really have to super promote yourself. But the main things for producers to do is handle their business, like I said, on the front end. It's hard to chase your record later when it's winning. And um, be original. You're going to find way more opportunities that way than the other way. Even though it seems like you're being cool and sound like everything that's out there. It's always going to be that motherfucker that come back around and do something different and win and change the whole game, you know. And everybody was doing this and then somebody just did this and now everybody's going that way. And so I, I, I suggest they do that. <clears throat>